now, coming to you live from the Big Bang Burger Bar. Foundations of Math 10 and Pre-Calculus. Dots. Dots. Today, more tangents. Hi, guys. I've been getting some great questions about calculating side lengths using tangent, so I want to explore this topic a little bit more. But first, a little review of solving equations that involve fractions. Consider the following. Oh, uh, sorry, Bill. Anyway, consider the equation a equals b over c. I've got three variables here, and if I had the value of any two, I could easily solve for the remaining one. For instance, if I knew that b and c were equal to 8 and 2, respectively, I could easily solve for a, getting a equals 4. No problem. Or, if I had a and c equal to 10 and 3, then I could solve for b by simply multiplying both sides of the equation by 3 and getting b is equal to 30. Again, no problem there. Or a third case, if I had a equal to 8 and b equal to 24, and it's c that I'm trying to solve for, how do I solve when the variable's in the denominator? Well, again, I would multiply both sides by c to bring it up out of the denominator, getting 8c equals 24, and now just divide both sides by 8, getting c equals 24 over 8, or c equals 3. Now, if you notice the second to last line, I have c equals 24 over 8, which, comparing that to the first line, 8 equals 24 over c, you notice that 8 and c have swapped places via the multiplication and divisions that we carried out. In fact, this will always be true. If I start out with a equals b over c, then I can easily manipulate it into the form c equals b over a. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, great, but what does this have to do with trigonometry? Well, consider a situation like this one where we want to find side c. Obviously, since we have a equals 17 degrees and little a equals 3 centimeters, we could find c by using the tangent ratio. Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So tangent of angle a equals little a over little c. So tangent of 17 degrees is 3 over c. Well, how do we solve for c? Well, we can do it like we just did up above and have c and tan 17 degrees trade places. This gives us c equals 3 over tan 17 degrees, which we can now easily type into our calculator. Menomina. 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 Getting 9.81225, etc., which I think I can round off safely to 9.8 centimeters. Of course, you might also have noticed here that since angle A is 17 degrees, it's quite easy to get angle C as 73 degrees so that the whole triangle has a sum of 180 degrees. In that case, you could have said that the tangent from angle C, which is 73 degrees, would be equal to little c over 3, and therefore 3 times tan 73 degrees is equal to c, getting surprise, surprise, the exact same result. <gasps> so, which way should you do it? Well, to be honest, I don't really care. They're both great, and they both do the same thing. Do whichever one comes more naturally. Do whichever one you won't make a mistake with. Do the one that you know is going to work for you. You know, part of being a good mathematician is knowing which pitfalls and mistakes you're likely to make and how to take steps to avoid making those mistakes. Uh, while I'm on the topic, I'd also like to point out that the reason I'm always writing down tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, and I'm showing a step of substitution before I calculate, isn't because I'm trying to bore you, but it's to stress the point 
that you should also be doing that. Why? Because it helps you to make sure that you're putting numbers in the right places. When I look at your working, it should be just as detailed as the examples that I'm giving you in these videos. That's what I expect to see in your working, and I am modeling it here for you. You're welcome. All right, it's time once again for your favorite part. Two for you. Question one, solve for x. Just leave your answer as a fraction. Don't fear it. Number two, solve for q with your answer to the nearest tenth.